In Commitment 2022 coverage, it's the eve of the midterm elections. Polls open at 6 a.m. in Missouri, most open at 7 a.m. in Kansas. Thousands of people filled out a ballot before advance voting ended in both states earlier today. And the balance of power in Washington will be determined tomorrow. Good evening, everybody. I'm Chris Katz. And I'm Laura Moritz. Missouri will pick its next U.S. Senator. KNBC 9's Cody Holyoke is profiling the race between Eric Schmidt and Trudy Bush Valentine for Heart of the Matter. Political newcomer Democrat Trudy Bush Valentine and Republican Attorney General Eric Schmidt want to take over for outgoing Senator Roy Blunt on Capitol Hill. With the Senate at a 50-50 split, turning that red seat blue would be a huge win for Democrats. But the latest polling isn't pointing that way. Schmidt still holds a double-digit lead in the latest Emerson College poll. But that's not stopping Bush Valentine from campaigning on the big issues. She ran through her ideas to fight inflation and high prices on Heart of the Matter Sunday. And I will stand up to big pharma, big insurance, big oil companies. People cannot be, to be choosing between groceries and between uh, insulin. I will do everything I can to get the cost down. Public safety is also a campaign issue. Last month, Eric Schmidt posted an ad trying to tie his opponent to the defund the police movement, associating Bush Valentine with Democrats like St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones and Congresswoman Cori Bush. But Bush Valentine says she's always supported funding the police. As far as my opponent you know, he's getting down on me for whatever he thinks I said, which is absolutely not what I said. We need to fund the police with more resources and more tools and more education so they can keep all of us safe. These back and forth exchanges through the airwaves are the most interaction we've seen between these two candidates this whole campaign season, in part because they've never appeared on stage together for a debate. You know, we tried to debate with Eric Schmidt with with everything we could. We reached out to the Schmidt campaign several times to ask him about his record as AG and campaign issues, but we never heard back. And we're not the only ones, as we discussed with our roundtable of journalists. He and his campaign have made it staff to limit uh, his exposure to uh, spontaneous interviews. He has done uh, some uh, brief news conferences on the spur of the moment at campaign events. The reality is that it's a it's a sign of the polarization that we're experiencing in the American political process. Uh, folks talk to the, the, the media outlets that are going to support their views. Uh, it is a turnout game and the more they can fire up in the case of uh, Attorney General Schmidt, his Republican conservative base, uh, the better he chances better chance he thinks he has of winning. Schmidt has repeatedly sued the federal government and pushed to get schools to drop masking requirements. He's also worked to try and tie Bush Valentine to President Biden's decisions, though she's never held political office. Schmidt crisscrossed the state, painting his opponent is out of touch. And I am running against an opponent, again, who's completely out of touch. I come from working class roots. I mentioned my dad worked seven days a week in midnight shift. I took out the trash and gave tours at the estate she grew up on and she has no ability to relate to regular folks. So is that message resonating with voters? It seems to be, at the very least, uh, that consistently sort of negative attack on Trudy Bush Valentine, either that or her inability to put forward a positive message of her own, seems to have had an impact. That same Emerson College poll a month ago showed her with a 41% favorable rating. Now, she's gained only one point in favorable ratings. She's 42-42 uh, in the latest poll. What that tells us, I think, is that for whatever reason, her message of trying to, to talk about the, the positive ways her family fortune has, has tried to support the state, uh, her commitment to generosity and philanthropy no. in the state, it isn't getting through. Missouri hasn't elected a Democrat to the Senate in a decade. We'll be watching the race closely. For Heart of the Matter, I'm Cody Holyoke, KMBC 9 News. And you can watch Cody's sit-down interview with Bush Valentine at KMBC.com. Just click the Heart of the Matter tab. Schmidt served as a Missouri State Senator and State Treasurer before he was appointed to the position of Attorney General in 2018. Trudy Bush Valentine is the daughter of August Bush, the beer maggot. Her professional experience includes working as a nurse for the Salvation Army. Outside groups have spent millions in this Senate race. $9.2 million in outside spending has gone to supporting Schmidt's campaign. $1.2 million has been spent opposing it. That's compared to $2,500 for Bush Valentine and $900,000 against. This will be the most expensive midterm elections ever, with federal and state spending hitting $16.7 billion. Outside groups alone have spent $1.9 billion to influence federal elections, blowing past the previous record set in 2018. Spending 
spending has exceeded $100 million in these states, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and Ohio. Democrats control the 50-50 Senate by virtue of Vice President Harris's tie-breaking vote. 35 seats are up for grabs tomorrow. There are 12 Democratic-held seats and 23 Republican-held seats. A net change of just one seat alters the balance of the chamber. And in Kansas, more Republicans have been turning in ballots during advance voting. According to the Secretary of State, it's historically gone in the Democrats' direction. The Republican for Governor Derek Schmidt met with supporters today, and he was asked about those early numbers favoring the GOP. I'm not going to make any predictions based on who's voting when. We'll see what the bottom line is after the, the polling places close tomorrow and everybody's voted. But I, I just think that it, it, it's confirming of what we feel out there on the ground, that Kansans know we can do better and they want to vote for change, and I think that's what we're going to see in these numbers. She's been, of course, hoping to beat Democratic incumbent Laura Kelly tomorrow. Governor Kelly says her campaign has knocked on one million doors in her re-election effort. It's absolutely imperative that they vote. You know, we have made so much progress in these past four years. We've really taken you know, Kansas from the ditch it was in in 2018 and exploded it where we're setting records for economic development. We're funding our schools. We're doing all sorts of things. You know, we need to keep on that path and not take a U-turn and go back the other way. This remains to be uh, one of the most competitive governor's races in the country. According to the 538 political website, Laura Kelly has a 67% chance of winning compared to Derek Schmidt at 33%. Only races in Wisconsin, Oregon, Nevada, and Arizona have closer margins. Governor Kelly is campaigning heavily on eliminating the Kansas sales tax on groceries. KNBC 9's Michael Mahoney checks the accuracy of one campaign ad. This is from a third party group, the Kansas Values Institute. Thanks to Governor Kelly, she asked the food tax to save us all some money. Kelly wanted to eliminate the 6.5% grocery tax this year. Instead, the GOP legislature approved phasing out the tax starting in 23. And the elimination of the state tax does not affect the local sales tax on food. Her Republican opponent, Derek Schmidt, also favors eliminating the tax, pointing out that Kelly vetoed a 2019 bill that would have done that. It was a bill, however, containing other sets of tax cuts, and Kelly said at the time the whole bill was a U-turn back to the tax cuts of former Governor Sam Brownback. Now, this commercial is coming from the Kansas Values Institute, a liberal advocacy and lobbying operation. The independent watchdog lab says 70% of its contributions are dark money, since the group does not have to disclose all of its donors. Now, Governor Kelly did want to eliminate the 6.5% tax this year. Instead, legislators are phasing it out over the next three years. Michael Mahoney, KMBC 9 News. Kansas grocery sales tax of 6.5% is the second highest in the nation. There's an amendment on the Kansas ballot that could have a big impact. Amendment 1 would give the legislature the ability to veto the governor and executive branch by a simple majority vote. And it could drastically change the state government, especially if Laura Kelly is re-elected governor. That would be really limiting to Laura Kelly if she were to win a, uh, a second term because the legislature is going to be heavily Republican. The past legislative session, Republicans had an 86 to 39 edge in the Kansas State House and a 29 to 11 edge in the state Senate. Kansas voters will decide on whether to retain state Supreme Court justices as come after the 2019 ruling that protected abortion rights. Two of the six justices who decided in favor of abortion rights are on the ballot, Dan Biles and Mar Marla Luckert. The group Kansans for Life is campaigning to get people to vote no on retaining those justices. The group Keep Kansas Courts Impartial wants all justices retained. We'll be watching the race for Jackson County Executive tomorrow night. Democratic incumbent Frank White faces Republican challenger Teresa Cass Galvin. White was appointed county exec in 2016. Galvin was elected in 2014 as a Jackson County legislator. A Republican has not won a countywide contest in 50 years.
Missouri voters will also decide some amendments to the state constitution. Amendment 1 gives the state treasurer more freedom to invest the state's money to earn a larger return. Amendment 3 legalizes recreational marijuana and opens the door for people with marijuana convictions to have their records expunged. And Amendment 4 requires Kansas City, Missouri to spend more money on the police department, which critics argue the city is already doing. Amendment 5 allows the Missouri National Guard to establish its own State Department rather than be under the State Department of Public Safety. Make KNBC 9 News your home for Commitment 2022 election coverage by downloading our KNBC 9 News app. Get the results as they come in right here tomorrow night.